Hi there, welcome to Switch Mania. I am Clarence and today, we'll talk about the best Nintendo Switch games on sale. We will be covering the UK, EU, US, Australia, and Canada eShop. But first and foremost, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you want to see more of this series, please leave a like, remember to subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell to receive future notifications. Likes and subscriptions help keep the channel alive. Just a quick reminder, 90% of you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel. If you are enjoying the videos and not subscribed yet, why not? You're coming back anyways. With all that said, let's get back to the video. First on our list is Filament. Filament is one of the great indie games that has thrived and grown on the Nintendo Switch. Filament is a slow-burning puzzle game with a steep difficulty spike later on that will put your patience to the test. It is, however, one of the best games I've played on the Switch. Filament captivates you with its puzzles and keeps you there with its empathy. Even though the universe Filament depicts is frightening, the way it is depicted is so full of care and love that it leaves a feeling of hope and wonder rather than despair. There have been a lot of indie darlings this year, and Filament should be one of them. Next is Mail Mole plus Express Deliveries. The level layouts are good, and moving your little mole around in them is enjoyable. You have a typical hub structure, a variety of level types, and a plethora of hidden secrets to discover. The character designs and music aren't as good as the rest of the presentation, but the graphics are bright and colorful, and everything works well. This is unlikely to change anyone's life, but if you enjoy this type of thing, I think you'll enjoy playing it. Mail Mole is pure platforming at its finest. It's cute, not too difficult, and has gameplay elements that will appeal to both new and experienced gamers. Next up, Binaries. Binaries is a platformer with a unique take on the genre. It offers a mix of platform and puzzle games that are just as difficult as the hardest games by allowing the player to control two characters at once. People who enjoy arcade style games will enjoy it because the emphasis is on gameplay and time attack. Binaries is a challenging platform game that often feels like a puzzle. However, its fun factor is almost entirely determined by your willingness to persevere through tasks that appear impossible to complete alone in a single campaign mode. Next is Project Highrise Architects Edition. Project Highrise Architects Edition is an excellent package that will appeal to any fan of simulation games. There is a lot to do and see here thanks to the DLC and it is a very addictive experience. The scenarios could be more dissimilar, but they each have their own set of problems to solve. Furthermore, the sandbox mode allows players to build in any way they want. Playing on the Switch is usually enjoyable, but the UI can make it difficult to see what's on the screen, particularly when it's not docked. But this is a game worth playing, and it will satisfy many people's simulation cravings. Next up, Warhammer 40,000 Mechanicus. If you like the idea of a future where cyborgs and robots fight each other and don't mind a learning curve, Warhammer 40,000, Mechanicus is probably for you. Battles appeared to be long, drawn out, and even a little slow at times. Occasionally, battles appeared to be too difficult to win. Fans of the Warhammer books and games may find the game easier to understand and enjoy. Overall, it was a fun game to play, and if you're looking for your next strategy game, consider this one. In Mechanicus, the universe of Games Workshop is entertaining to play with. It's entertaining to play, well-made, and extremely reliable in terms of functionality. Despite a few flaws, it is an excellent choice for Warhammer fans. Next is Subsurface Circular. I don't mind the short length or lack of replayability because I'd rather get a concentrated dose of great storytelling than do endless tasks and quests over and over. All I want to hear or read is a great story or at the very least a good sequel to Thomas Was Alone. Subsurface Circular is good at both. Subsurface Circular is a well-crafted compact experience. It shines in every way, from its retro-futuristic aesthetic and hypnotic music to its meticulously crafted text and story. This game has the perfect balance of style and substance. Next up, Beach Buggy Racing. Beach Buggy Racing is an enjoyable karting game. It's entertaining to drive, has bizarre items, and you'll probably enjoy it for a while. The game is simple to learn and enjoyable to play alone or with family or friends. It's probably best to play it in short bursts and don't expect it to be a serious racer. It can't compete with Mario Kart and has a few minor flaws, but it's a good alternative for a fraction of the price. Beach Buggy Racing is a nice enough kart racing game that does just enough to keep you entertained. Even though it can't compete with the massive Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, it holds its own because it has a lot of content for a low price. There's enough here to keep you interested, but don't expect to be wowed. Next is Escatos. Escatos is a fantastic shoot em up game on its own, but when you combine it with Judgment Silver Sword, Cardinal Sins, and all of the other modes and features included in this package, you have a game that is extremely easy to recommend. If you do everything Escatos has to offer, you'll be busy for hours. Even though there was little doubt, 
this Switch version of the game works flawlessly. Another excellent shoot em up game for the system that even newcomers to the genre may enjoy. Escados is ideal for people who have never played a game like this before because it is simple to learn and has simple scoring rules that add to the fun of the constant shooting action. It also helps that there are a couple of cute bonus retro games. Next is Riptide GP, Renegade. It runs and plays well in all modes while retaining the excellent game mechanics and new ideas from previous versions. At the time of writing, and because Wave Race isn't yet available on the Switch, it's one of the best racing games on the system, going above and beyond what you'd expect for the price. Overall, Riptide GP Renegade is a fun Nintendo Switch game to play. The XP and BP upgrade system makes the game a lot of fun to replay, and the online and local split-screen multiplayer allows you to play with other people at any time and in any location. However, the choppy frame rate in handheld mode can make the game feel less fluid overall, so you might want to play it docked. If you enjoy Wave Race or racing games in general, Riptide GP Renegade would be an excellent addition to your Switch library. Next up, Heroes of Hammerwatch Ultimate Edition. Heroes of Hammerwatch is one of the Nintendo Switch's most addictive roguelike games. It combines classic action RPG progression with a hostile world that forces heroes to question their every move and wonder if their next foe will be their last. Handcrafted levels will always be superior to procedurally generated ones, but Heroes of Hammerwatch can close the gap thanks to its simple gameplay loop and the fact that even the smallest amount of progress is significant. Heroes of Hammerwatch is a must-play because it allows you to try out different classes, improve your town, and enter dungeons with a group of trusted friends. Next is The Gardens Between. The Gardens Between has beautiful and relaxing music, a pleasing art style, funny and expressive characters, and a sad and touching story. I was always blown away by how well the levels were designed. The voxel agents continued to surprise me and provide me with new ways to solve puzzles, which kept me on my toes. The experience was just the right length, and it ended with a simple, beautiful, and touching moment that I will remember for a long time. The Gardens Between is a work of minimalist storytelling that uses no words to tell a story about friendship and time. It allows the player to fill in the story with their own feelings and memories by using a few events from childhood that almost everyone can relate to, making it a shockingly moving, personal experience. Anyone who enjoys puzzle games should own this game. It has a lovely surrealist style and puzzles that are challenging but fair. Next up, Umaranji Generation Special Edition. Umaranji Generation is known for their ability to make contradictions work in their favor. It's a fun adventure as well as a painful trap. It's lively, bright, and empowering, but it's also dark, suffocating, and crippling. It has the potential to change your life because of the way it combines disparate elements. It has permanently altered my perception of the real world and video games. It couldn't have done so if it wasn't so fundamentally flawed. Umaranji Generation Special Edition is a thrilling journey through a crumbling world. It's a one-of-a-kind gaming experience that will stick with you long after you've put it down, and and the included DLC and Switch improvements make it even better. Next is Irony Curtain from Matryoshka with Love. Iron Curtain from Matryoshka with Love is a well-executed point-and-click adventure with a compelling story, amusing characters, and detailed scenes that make for an unforgettable spy adventure. Fans of classic point-and-click adventure games will not want to miss this. Artifacts Monday created a fun, quick, and interesting point-and-click game. They used the appropriate amount of humor, story, characters, and situations. Despite the fact that it is clearly a throwback, they put enough of their own spin on the various formulas they used to create something that feels both familiar and new. Irony Curtain is a sure bet for fans of point-and-click adventures. It's a good place to start for people who have never played in this style before. Next up, Unspottable. Surprisingly, for a party gaming console like the Nintendo Switch, this is a great party game. It's simple to learn and enjoyable to play, and it's difficult to imagine your family or friends not enjoying the find the real me and punch me concept. I'm not sure if that idea appeared in any of the popular Mario Party games but it's a simple and very effective idea for people to enjoy on a low-cost title. If you play with kids, you'll notice how their skills improve over time so they can win. If the developers could add more fun elements to this basic concept, it would be a great game to play with family and friends. Next is Do Not Feed the Monkeys. You go to the Primate Observation Club to watch monkeys while trying to pay for more cages and take care of yourself. The interaction of money and time is always fascinating. You can observe how the characters in the story live. There is only one rule that must be followed, do not feed the monkeys. This is a one-of-a-kind point-and-click adventure in which we must act as detectives while also keeping track of our time and money. It's one of the most unique games we've played in a long time, so give it a shot if you're looking to try something new. Next up, Mr. Driller Drill Land. Mr. Driller Drill Land is a GameCube port from 2002, but it looks, feels, and plays like a modern game. The main game is extremely deep, 
and there are numerous built-in variations that drastically alter how you play. This makes it an excellent entry. The new difficulty setting for the game is also a nice addition. Finally, it's a shame that Mr. Driller Drillland took nearly 20 years to become well-known around the world. We didn't get to play a great arcade puzzle game with personality and multiple ways to play. I believe you should take advantage of the opportunity to play this game. Nobody knows when we'll see Mr. Driller and his pals again. Next is One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 Deluxe Edition. One Piece Pirate Warriors 3 comes to Switch with a Deluxe Edition that retains all of the original releases pros and cons, a massive amount of content, repetitive gameplay mechanics and missions, different modes, and anime-inspired graphics. A great Switch game that is a lot of fun to play on the go. The developers of these Warriors games are also obviously familiar with the Nintendo Switch as a piece of hardware. One Piece, Pirate Warriors 3 has been out for three years, but the ultimate edition for the Nintendo Switch truly is the ultimate edition. One Piece, Pirate Warriors 3 Deluxe Edition is over-the-top action at its best, and it's a great way to get into the One Piece anime. Next is Katamari Damacy Reroll. After a decade later, people were still enchanted by the bright and fuzzy charm. After the game, you can only replay the levels to earn more stars, but it's still a good game to keep around for a few minutes of mindless fun. Katamari Damacy Reroll is still as simple, silly, and enjoyable to play as it was 10 years ago. The main game remains unchanged, but the remaster makes enough changes to make anyone who enjoys this game happy. Let's hope that after this remake, Bandai Namco invests in the original sequel. And last, but not the least, One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition. One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition is an excellent addition to the Nintendo Switch game lineup, particularly from an Once Piece standpoint. It's enjoyable to play on the Nintendo Switch because there are numerous quests to complete and the system is quite durable. The multiplayer component of the game could have been improved, but fans of the One Piece series will have a good time with it. The One Piece Unlimited World Red Deluxe Edition for the Nintendo Switch is the best way to play Unlimited World Red and is exactly how a licensed game should be. That's all guys. I hope this video was helpful in deciding which game to play, and thank you for checking out the list. Please remember to subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.